so for me, the IC title was always the workhorse title. Obviously, people ask me who my favorite wrestlers are, and it always goes between like, you know, Rey Mysterio, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and Shawn Michaels. All have been Intercontinental Champions. The latter two, some of the greatest Intercontinental Champions that you have had in this industry. And then you talk about Jericho. So at the time, uh, I lived in Tampa. I read uh, A Lion's Tale, Jericho's first book. And then I ran into him in a, at a smoothie shop. I was like, oh, what's up, Chris? Oh, how you doing? And I'm like, oh my, I don't know this man. You know what I'm saying? I just read his book and I thought that like I was, I, I knew, I know your life. I, I, I read what you said. I know your whole life. We know each other. Like, you know, I, I don't know you, bro. You don't know me. You know, I'm over here just like we're buddies. But he's been, he, he's always been awesome. Um, for Even from that day, like really just like welcoming and, and you know, just willing to help. And um, so for him to be the one that I beat for the Intercontinental Championship, number one, that was my first title ever. And, and I'd only been in the industry for like maybe three, four years at that time, but I hadn't won any titles on the Indies. I didn't win any titles in, um, you know, at FCW or, uh, you know, in Deep South. So uh, just to be in there with a ring general like Chris, it was an awesome experience. And again, just like, all right, let's listen. Let's listen, you know, whatever you want to do. Oh, we're going off, off track right now? Okay, cool, man. Yeah, I'm here for it, man. So I was always appreciative of just being in the ring with him. And then not to mention, too, like that match uh, Shawn Michaels was involved in, too. Because at the time, like, Jericho and him were feuding. Yeah. So that was the time, yeah, like, Shawn, Shawn's wife was involved in that. It got, like, real personal. It was really, really cool angle. So for me to even be in that fold was just incredible. So, um, yeah, an incredible honor to be able to, uh, to, to dethrone Y2J for, for the Intercontinental Championship. It was, you know, it was on a lot of different levels. It was great. Well, since it was so early in your career, I wonder, like, what did you learn most about what it takes to be a champion in WWE during that time? So I feel like sometimes people underestimate the amount of extra work that happens yeah. when you become a champion. I think, again, for me, like, that since the Intercontinental Championship was always the workhorse title, you know, is somebody okay over there? Somebody's, <laughs> someone want to help that man? Oh, Somebody's yeah. screaming, is no one going to say anything? Is no one going to help that man? He's screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> oh, he's over there in Taker's house, at the haunted house. Wow. Okay, cool. One of the two. But, He's, oh, the 2K. I was getting yeah, frustrated because that, that would be me too, getting frustrated too. But yeah, so, so it was really important for me as Intercontinental Champion to be somebody that embodied that workhorse mentality, to be able to go out and defend your title in a six-pack challenge or, you know, um, go up against some of the best technical wrestlers or be able to just, like, be almost a chameleon and have, like, just to be able to go up against anybody that has any, any style and compliment them and vice versa. Like I really pride myself on being able to go in there with anybody and have a great match. So that to me was what was most important was the quality of the matches, the quality of the work, the quality of the, the, the title of being the champion to be the best in that, in that field, in that category. So um, the, the work rate was always what was most important to me to uh, really show people and to show yourself that you belong in that championship role. It's cool to hear you say that the IC title meant so much to you as a kid too, because you were so synonymous with it for a while that it makes sense. It's cool to hear that, you know, full circle type yeah. thing, you know? No, no doubt, no doubt. So I, I want to know, with, with, we've got all this Undertaker stuff here. Yeah. And I was wondering, you know, you hear about, you know, Undertaker always talking now about how he lived the character for 30 years. Yeah. Um, are you happy that you didn't have to do that with a Jamaican accent? Oh man, the like, liberation. So it was a it was kind of an emotional roller coaster, and I've told the told story a few times on a different a, a bunch of different interviews. But um, so initially when I came in, Vince was like, "Hey, look, you got to do everything in character. I want every interview to be in character." So at the time, we had WWE Magazine. Do people read magazine like actual paper anymore? Not no. just digital. So magazine, we had the WWE Magazine, and they would call me, and I would just get like a two hundred three number, so I'd you know answer the phone and be like, "Oh, hello." Like, yeah, this is uh, Scott Dorsey, and I'm calling for uh, Kofi. Is Kofi there? I'm calling for the magazine. We have an interview. And I'd be like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, he's here. Hold on. <coughs> Wagwan, it's Kofi Kingston here. You know, you got an interview going on. What's up? And he would ask me all the questions, you know. So it was like a silly situation because it's like, you know that I'm not Jamaican. And I know that you know that I'm not Jamaican. But Vince said that I have to put this accent on. And now we got to do this, play this game, you know, and I got to interview you with this accent. And matter of fact, so at the, you know, uh, SOS by Kali Buds, we did something 
where he's like legit from Bermuda. He grew up in Bermuda, he has a real accent. And for those of you who are not Jamaican, know that my accent was garbage, it was terrible. All the Jamaicans were mad at me on, on MySpace, talking about how bad the accent was, and I knew it was bad. <laughs> I didn't need to hear it, but they kept on telling me. So I had to do an interview with Kali Buzz where it was like superstar to superstar, and I had to put on my fake Jamaican accent with a real man from the Caribbean who had a real Caribbean accent. And it was one of the most just, just embarrassing things that I, that I had to do. But Vince told me that I had to have the accent when I did these interviews. So I'm sorry, but I had to do it. So um, one interview I did with uh, BBC, uh, the, I think the guy's name was Leslie Goff. Not that I'm bitter about what he did, <laughs> what he tried to do to me. But he said, uh, you know, he's like grilling me. And he's like, well, yeah. Uh, and he was, from, he was from England too. He's like, oh yeah, uh, Kofi, uh, K your, 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 your name Kofi is actually a Ghanaian name, right? And you, you uh, are Ghanaian, right? And I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not Ghanaian, no. You see, well, my mom, she really had a, a, an affection for the motherland and Kofi is her way of having a tribute to the motherland. So I'm just BSing him, you know. So I'm, I'm bobbing and weaving. He's asking me all these hard hitting questions and I'm just shaking them off. You know what I'm saying? No, no, you won't catch me. But after the interview, I was flustered. And I'm sweating, I'm like, oh my God, like this dude is really grilling me about like my, my background, man. He, know, he knows, he's gonna know. And then like 15 minutes later, my mom calls me and says like, oh, Cope, someone just called me about uh, the, the, your, your career. And he asked me about if you were Jamaican. I said, no, but he's from Ghana, but you know, he just has to do it for work. And you know, he's really trying to like oh, get his. No, so now mom. I'm like, mom, mom. kayfabe, mom, <laughs> kayfabe, yeah, it's over. So then, like two days later, like Leslie Goff writes this article and you can go out and, and Google it. And this is BBC. This is like a reputable, yeah. like news entity. Come on, man. You know, this is world wrestling entertainment. You know, there are people out here that play characters. This show is out of character. Yeah. Some people play characters on there. You know, The Undertaker is not really like a walking zombie. He's not actually dead. He's alive. Shockingly. He has kids, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? We, we know. So like he, you know, so, so then the article comes out and he's just talking about like, oh, well, Kofi is ashamed of his culture and his heritage and this and then he's, you know, he's not, and just like bash me. I was like, oh my God. I said, it's over, bro. I survived these vignettes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this terrible face, accent, you know? you know, and all for this and now it's over. So I go in and it was in New Orleans. I go into the office and Vince, I said, Vince, we got to talk, man. It's over, bro. Like they know, they know <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. And he's like, well, you know, you, you might think that everybody uh, knows, but it's just a small section of people that knows you. We, you're still going to go out there and do that accent. I'm like, no. <laughs> OK. So then like six months later, he calls me back into his office and he's like, yeah, I think we're going to have you drop the accent today. I said, oh, oh, for real? OK. So then, you know, like obviously the uh, the the, the uh, I think it was like bragging rights where I was out there on the team and we're all arguing. Right. And everybody knows Triple H. I said, OK, guys. If they, if, they, if, they, if they see us like this, man, they're going to run right through us, man. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Aren't you supposed to be Jamaican? And oh, uh-oh, you got me. <laughs> and from that moment, that was it. You know, it wasn't like a huge, like, storyline, but it was like... When that happened, nobody cared. Even yeah. People were like, oh, and it's, you've been yeah, lying to yeah, us yeah. this whole time? <laughs> well, this is terrible. And, and you know what I mean? And I thought, like, okay, people are going to be mad. I said, I can never go to Jamaica because people are going to be mad that I tried to imitate their culture and I'll never go. And I remember I'd never been there before. And it was like maybe three years later that they uh, we had, I had an appearance there. And I'm like, guys, you can't send me here. They're not, they're not going to let me come back. Do you know what I tried to do? I tried to be Jamaican because I listened to Damian Marley. I listened to his album and I thought I could just go out there and put this accent on and now they're going to. So of course I go over there and everybody's cool. You know, everyone's just like, yeah, well, we knew you were Jamaica, you know, but we like that you represent. It was all love, you know? So everything was Irie. That's what they say. That's what they say, you know? That's what they say there. So, um, there. That is what they say. Yeah, it was liberating to like be able to drop the accent. And, you know, the only other person that had the same struggle as me was Santino because he's actually from Canada, right? And you know, he'd have to come out and be, ah, oh, Santino, Marella. <laughs> yeah. And he'd have to put on, so we would just sit in the bleachers sometime and we would just tell our stories like, man, yeah, the magazine called this, we got to put on this accent. He's like, oh, me too. And we're just, this is the only, we could relate to each other. So 
when I got to finally like drop it, you know, we, you know, we had the conversation. He's like, all right, you know, it's kind of like a little dap, like, hey man, you, you got out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he was, the, he was the only one that could relate to me on that level. Side. So yeah, but it was really liberating because a lot of times it's like hard enough to remember like what you have to say in front of millions of people, let alone like how you're saying it. So the fact that I didn't have to worry about how I had to butcher an accent and, you know, use an entire culture's, you know, you know, just, just words and all that. Um, it was just liberating. It was a big, you know, relief off of my, uh, off my back.